Welcome to the CBIA BizCast powered by Google. I'm Amanda Marlowe and today I'm joined by M&T Bank Hartford Regional President Michael Weinstock. Michael is a UConn graduate, so husky. He was named M&T Market President in 2015 and was tasked with starting up and operating all of the bank's activities within Connecticut. Michael, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, really, I, I, I'm I'm really happy uh, to be here, and uh, you know, I would just uh, I'd start off at, at just as a as a message at M and T. You know, we know that our success is dependent upon the the health and the well being of the communities that we serve, and when our communities succeed, everyone's lives get better. You know, as such, we're committed to the Connecticut uh, to Connecticut because we believe it's a great place to live, a great place to work and a prime location for businesses to thrive. I know recently you've been showing so much um, of that commitment to Connecticut. I feel like every week we're hearing about a new announcement, a new program coming out of M&T, um, some state partnerships, and I definitely want to talk about those. Um, but first, obviously, there's been some big news over the past year um, since M&T acquired People's United Bank, which obviously was headquartered in Bridgeport, I'm sure it's, it's been a busy year for you. Yeah, you know, it, it's nice of you to say that you're hearing uh, day in and day out about some of the initiatives, but this is not just uh, dedicated to Connecticut. These are things, some of the things you see are some of the things we're really good at and, and we're replicating them in the state and we've done them elsewhere in our footprint. Um, and basically, I, I, I would tell you that, you know, um, when you look at our branch network and when you look at where we are, we're in places where people need us, and, and that's what makes us really successful. And so, and so, uh, you're as to the question of how is it going with the acquisition, you know, M and T and People's United been working hard, really hard, to create and ensure a smooth transition, keeping customers informed of the changes taking place. You know, as we near our computer systems uh, integration over the Labor Day weekend. And so we're really excited to welcome People's United customers to M&T Bank, um, and and, uh, and and we're set up as 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 we see it for a, a successful transition for that. And and any issues that happen, we'll take care of them. Um, you know, o over over this period of time, um, in working with my new pub colleagues, who are now M&T colleagues, of course. You know, uh, Frank McAleese, who runs the Bridgeport region, and I in Hartford have just had the pleasure of working with so many great people. And and what we're interested in is is preserving that good customer uh, will and, and all the work that everyone's done over the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years and more um, with the the people's um, uh, clients. And, and we want to welcome them as much as them welcome us and, and do a good job for this community and for, for our new clients. Um, you know, I've had the pleasure of working with Rick Iovani, who, who runs our middle market group over in New Haven, um, and who's done a really nice job. He's really well known in that space. Um, up in Hartford, we've got Mike Schweighoffer, who, um, I mean, when you meet him, uh, he was born like a mile from our Hartford office. He's went to public school schools in, 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 in Hartford. He went to college a mile and a half away. You know, he's not, never wanted to stray from Hartford, so he's a fixture for us in that in that area, and, and we look forward to continuing the great work he's done. We got Mark Evans running our real estate group up there. Um, uh, Dave Dixon, who's our wealth management uh, team leader uh, over there, who's running the state for us um, in the Wilmington Trust side. Um, we've got Jerome Beyer, um, who's running business banking and working through the branches. And was, and later we're going to talk about the Connecticut Boost Fund, which is kind of fundamentally where Jerome and his team come in, as well as Stephen Santino, who who is running our branches in the northern part of Connecticut. So I, I, I've, I've, my time with all of those individuals and their commitment to the community ha has just been awe-inspiring for me. That's awesome. And, you know, a lot of people who are well burst in Connecticut and, and what's going on with the people for sure. I know there's a lot of work obviously being done in Bridgeport. Just this week, you announced um, a new pop-up spotlight shop. Can you tell me a little bit about that and how it's going to work? Yeah, it's really exciting because, um, and, and I'll talk about it a little, but it's a pop-up shop. It can go to where it needs to pop up. I mean, it's it's uh, it's mobile and, um, and, and um, 
you know, we've done it in other areas of the bank, and it's it's a it's a, I mean, you know, it's a really uh, fundamentally sound way to present somebody to the community and and enhance their experience as well as everybody's experience with them. Um, and you know, it, it represents our commitment not just to Bridgeport but Connecticut and our support of uh, small businesses. Um, you know, Connecticut, 169 towns. We're made up of small businesses who support those communities, and 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 uh, we understand um, that that building those businesses up is how our communities are going to thrive into the future and now, um, especially as we come out of COVID, when a lot of them have been impacted to a way that that other companies have not. You know, the goal is to give small businesses a chance to have retail space and access to customers, foot traffic that they wouldn't otherwise have. Um, you know, we just uh, launched, the first one's going to be in Captain's Cove in Bridgeport. Um, but as I said, it's mobile. So it's in Captain's Cove, but, you know, if we can gather some support in another area because there's a lot of foot traffic, we would consider those those things. And the first, I, I want to give a shout out to who, who we see um, in this space and who, who we're dealing with first. So our first small business participant is Alicia's Bakeria. And they're going to be at Captain's Cove from August 10th to the 21st. Um, so, okay, it's www, uh, you know, uh, L-E-I-S-H-A-S-B-A-K-E-R-I-A dot com. Um, a shout out to them. It's a women-owned business in downtown Bridgeport. Um, they serve breakfast, sandwiches, wraps, and small batch bakery goods. And and we're really proud to support their efforts in Bridgeport. And um, the second small business is uh, El Coquito, um, and they're going to be there from August 24th to September 4th. And uh, www.elcoquitoct.com. It's a family-owned and operated business. It's located in Bridgeport. It's been serving the Bridgeport community for over 30 years, and they specialize in Puerto Rican food. Um, you know, I would encourage everybody listening uh, to support this effort. You know, these are businesses that, that have been really giving to the community, especially during COVID. And um, so we can see them uh, Wednesday to Sunday, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, 11 to 3, and Friday to Sunday, 12 to 5, kind of weather permitting. So um, really, really um, excited about what uh, um, Leisha's Bakeria and El Coquito is going to be doing there. And, and we're here to support them, and we hope everybody comes out and supports them as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Sounds like it'll be a great place to go grab, you know, some food for lunch or even on the weekends with the family to support a local business. Now, how did you guys um, choose these businesses? Was it, you know, you kind of looked at what was in the area, who M&T was already helping support? Yeah, so, I mean, it's really from a reach out of, to learn and listen. Um, so, you know, we don't have the answers, right? Um, and And so when we go into new communities, I would say as a general rule, um, we're there to learn and to listen and to hear what the community brings to us. Um, and so that, that way we know how to support us to the community. Um, if we're, we're not a product pusher, we're a solutions uh, provider. And so I would say as a general framework without getting into the weeds on it, that's kind of our thinking. Our thinking is 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 listening and learning and 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 driving our capabilities around what our, what those communities need, and then and then we can focus on on individual tasks. And also in Bridgeport, um, you guys are doing the Entrepreneur Innovation Lab. I know that you know applications have been coming in. Uh, obviously, another focus area helping businesses who are just starting up getting into um, the market in Connecticut. Can you tell us a little bit about that program and what the anticipated benefit is for the community over there? Really exciting, and for a time being, we're we're going to send people back to college, uh, you know, and and give people a chance to really uh, gain the skills that they they desire in a framework that can uh, really enhance their business experience. And so the Innovation Lab, it's designed to provide, you know, local multicultural business, business owners with the skills needed to build strong businesses, spur growth um, in the greater Bridgeport area and help build generational wealth, which which is a real concern, right, w within, within these communities. So 
So um, we want to be that that we want that to be front and forward. Um, you know, M and T's model is focused on a, a a very deep local understanding of the people and places we serve. As I was as I was uh, illustrating in in my last comments, um, this understanding is going to shape the curriculum of the innovation lab to address the specific needs that are unique to the challenges of multicultural small businesses in Bridgeport. You know, our goal is is really to ensure our neighbors, our local business owners, have more opportunities to connect with local bankers who understand the culture and unique needs while opening new pathways, if you will, for our communities to achieve financial empowerment. Um, the curriculum itself is going to focus on business planning, understanding and establishing credit, establishing how to establish capital, business formation fundamentals, marketing and networking. You know, M&T is launching this program in partnership with the University of uh, Bridgeport's Innovation Center, um, and which actually opened in 2019 to help foster entrepreneurship, uh, innovation for students to mentor students in business startups, ownership and development. Um, so our program with them is a seven week program and which cool it's going to um, and we've done this in the bank before, which is I've seen that it, it's really neat. Um, we've done it internally for new ideas um, and it's going to be a seven week like a, a shark tank type of pitch competition at the end with the opportunity for entrepreneurs uh, to win grants up to six thousand dollars funded by M&T. Kind of edge in there, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. There's that. Uh, the multi, you know, the multi, the the innovation lab, you know, is is again, um, like other things we do, is just you know, it developed by listening and learning sessions, um, you know, um, held with the multicultural uh, community leaders and business owners in, in the Bridgeport market to to address the challenges that they face every day. Um, and growing businesses within that particular market. So, so our innovation lab is an important uh, step for m ts work to encourage and invest in the entrepreneurship and the communities we serve. You know, these these multicultural businesses, when when guided, they can make a big difference in people's lives and uplift our communities. Um, and we all benefit from that. Um, you know, um, ethically, um, and, you know, um, empirically, and, and, and also just from uh, bonding our communities. You know, M&T has done a similar program, I just by example, in Buffalo, New York, um, which is a big success. And, and in one example, Alicia and uh, Alyssa Officer, two sisters, they have a company called Unapologetic Coffee, and they were second place in the labs competition. And and it's grown their coffee company. They produce fair trade, small batch roasts, and sell their products to other businesses locally and direct to consumers and online even. Wow. Uh, it's just one example. And they have subscription services, um, which is kind of cool. It really drives their business. And people know it's a small business. People know it's from Buffalo. And that it genders people to its, uh, to its product. Um, but this is just one of many, as you said at the beginning of our conversation, it's one of many um, investments m and is making in diverse communities. You know, we announced the Amplify Fund um, at our acquisition, which is $25 million to be, to be um, put into the market over a three-year period in the, in the um, old uh, people's footprint. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're looking at the nonprofit side of the communities as well to establish uh, and build our communities out, you know, and we've done um, and, and we've and we also have 118 multicultural banking centers within our footprint and we're building a new one, hopefully to open in September in East Hartford. So we're really, really proud of that and supporting those communities uh, directly and, and, and visibly. Um, and, you know, we're 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 committed to. Ex it, continuing and extending the partnerships we've had in the past um, through PUB. Um, and as I mentioned before, we're really, um, we're supportive of all the work Peoples has done in the last 5, 10, 15, 20, however many years. And we don't, we, we don't want to forget that. And we haven't forgotten that. And so, so whether it's the Vermont City Marathon, just to name it, or the Pan Mass Challenge or other things that are happening in Connecticut, we're going to continue to support those 
uh, those um, organizations um, and institutions. Well, I think it's so important, especially right now, you know, these small businesses, I think post pandemic, a lot of people in the community really want to help small businesses. And I think it's really encouraging to see the banks helping out and then, you know, get, getting them out on the streets up and running so that people can really go and, and support them. And hopefully we can see some of those um, businesses who are entrepreneurs right now later in those uh, pop up spots. So that'll be that'll be really great. Um, obviously, another big announcement uh, that we don't really see too often, MNT was alongside the Connecticut Department of Economic and Com Community Development uh, just a couple of weeks ago when they announced the Small Business Boost Fund. And this is similar to a program that was uh, implemented many years ago in Connecticut, but this time it's a little bit different. It has the backing of businesses, um, banks like you guys. Can you tell me a little bit about your involvement in this program? Well, one, I think it's it's uh, uh, we've we've been uh, involved in similar programs in other states um, at the direction of David Lehman, uh, Governor Lamont, Susan Bicewitz. I mean, th this is a unique and 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 uh, and and a public private partnership that really is is capable of driving business over a very long period of time. And is successful. It's a rollover type of thing with the state's money continuous stay in. So this could this could this could be many years um, in, in in the working for what, what what we're doing here. So it's a very um, intelligent and smart program. You know, I, I'm going to say overall, you know, M and T. Um, as I said before, we recognize that small businesses are the backbone of the local economies, um, in and and especially in underserved. And diverse communities, which is the, the the fundamentals behind the Connecticut Boost Fund. You know that's why we're proud to be joining Connecticut Small Boost Fund um, to support these small businesses. That if you look at what it's doing, these small businesses, you know, um, they can lack the access to affordable and flexible credit, right? And that's what we're talking about. Um, our focus as a community bank's always been providing. Um, the resources that that financially empower our customers and and this private public private partnership is just another important action uh, to further that that mission so what i'll say about it is mnt is committed in the first tranche tranche a to five million dollars to the fund um like i said under resourced underbanked communities is the focus um and and really uh, best said the most fiscally and economically distressed municipalities is is a target market so so what is the fund it's it's um the first um tranche we're, we're thinking is going to be circa 50 million dollars the goal uh, over the next couple of years is to grow it to 150 million um it has the potential um without getting in the weeds to 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 um support more than 2,000 micro and small businesses. That's a good start. Um, that's a good initiative. Um, and this is gonna be with capital as well as advisory services. Um, you know, um, and to really restore character commerce across rural, urban, suburban, native communities and build a new, more vibrant financial system on the other side that values equity, diversity, and resilience. Um, you know, the state of Connecticut has set the target, as I said, for distressed municipalities uh, and the funds made available to small businesses and nonprofits throughout the state. And, and I'm gonna say that again, nonprofits, which is kind of unusual, but kind of important. Uh, the fund will be distributed to meet um, originating lenders target uh, markets, which include underbanked, I've already said it, low to moderate income communi communities. Let me just talk about that for a second, who the lenders are. So the way this is formulated and set up is you're going to have uh, the state, um, uh, the state at about 33% uh, of the fund, um, the banks at about 62% of the fund, which leaves 5%, which is the CDFIs. And I'll give them a shout out at the end. I, I think that's important. And hopefully I recognize all of them. If I missed anybody, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, but there's a lot of them. But what the CDFIs will do is distribute the funds, and the CDFIs have a unique and, and excellent knowledge base of what's necessary in the communities and getting the word out. 
right? One of the issues with programs like this is we need to get the word out. We need to get to the people who are who will benefit the most, right? And will benefit the most our communities from them having access to these funds. That's how the CDIs drive it because they're already in market all over the state. So the banks put in the funds, um, the, the, the Department of Economic Development uh, places their funds, they're in the first loss position, which allows uh, if no losses uh, or small losses happen, the fund, their funds will continuously can roll within this. That's that's the idea. So this can go for a very long time and continue through. And then the CDIF make great decisions, but also have um, also a 5% at stake. So they're making really good decisions. So you can see how everybody's partnered in and, and, and there's a good share of, of, of expertise there. Um, Connecticut also fin uh, providing grants to the CDFIs that'll help them with some financial uh, um, capabilities to get through the uh, th this process and help them uh, in their everyday fun place with the fund. So I I, I think I, I, there's there's so much to unpack on this program, but the simplicity is this: it's flexible credit um, in communities that need it. Um, and so just a shout out to the CDFIs because they're doing the hard and heavy lifting here, if you will. And so it's a Sendus um, Capital for Change. Community Economic Development Fund, Pursuit Community Finance, Southeastern Connecticut Enterprise Region, NDC's Community Impact Loan Fund, um, and these local and national organizations have many, many decades of explicit focus on historically under-resourced communities. If I missed anybody, I apologize. <laughs> And you know, obviously, there's some there's banks involved. And there's uh, these companies as well. It shows that they're committed to Connecticut and they're, you know, believe in Connecticut's future. And obviously, just talking to you, you can tell that you're passionate about the state and, and the state's future. What drives that passion for you? Is it being from here or you just really see it as a place for opportunity? Yeah, no, I grew up in Fairfield County. My, my mom uh, uh, actually worked for the state. She ran the off track betting office in Bridgeport. Um, so my family's from here. Um, we're dedicated to here. You mentioned I'm a UConn uh, grad. Um, my my sister went to UHA, so there's there's a lot going on here, and and um, and and we see you know. And I've been in the financial community uh, for my whole life, and dedicated a lot of that to uh, to Connecticut. You know, we opened our Norwalk you know Norwalk office for M and T about seven years ago. So we've been working with many of the CDFIs you heard, many of the not-for-profits, the state, and and others to drive these these things, and and so we, we want you want everybody to have a fundamental and fair and equitable chance, um, and and one of the things that that you see is is that these are vibrant, um, you know, Connecticut has 169 towns, and the and the underserved or economically distressed is so much of a better way to put it. We can do some impact there, and it's good for the bank, it's good for the community, and it's good for the state. So, and and um, and I and I and I not speaking for myself. I'm speaking for the bank when I say that. Uh, I'm speaking for people who understand how to grow businesses, how to grow communities. And if you look at M&T's fundamentals, you know they're pretty darn good. And in the areas we serve. Um, We've we've made some major impacts, and those people have helped to grow our bank. So it's a it, it's 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 always a two way street, um, and we're really um, and at the end of the day, um, you know, any any place we can add the values of a large bank like us to those communities puts a smile on everybody's face and makes us proud here uh, at MNT Bank to be the bank that we are. Awesome. Well, I also do want to point out, you know, obviously the application process can be uh, overwhelming sometimes for business owners. So Connecticut Small Business Development Center is hosting a series of webinars uh, in August, Tuesdays and Thursdays for businesses to learn a little bit about the program, the Small Boost Business Fund, and also maybe some other options uh, that might work for them. So, you know, it's good for, for people to know there is help out there. And I know that the banks and the lenders um, are also going to be helping out through this process. Yeah, and there's a lot of individual responsibility, right? If if you see something, say something. I mean, get the word out. That's really that's the first initiative. 
The second initiative will be to get the, the, the dollars and the funds in, into the right hands. Well, Michael, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. We learned so much and we're really looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, the impact that M&T and the other, you know, community partners have in the coming years. Well, from all of the family at M&T, um, um, thanks for having me. Thanks for having us. Um, it's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. Right. Thank, thank you for listening to this week's VidCast. You can listen and subscribe to our podcast on Apple and YouTube. And for more episodes, you can head on over to CBIA.com.